Good evening and happy 5th Cinco de Mayo. Today's Cinco de Mayo, the 5th of May. We're happy to have Alex Del Carmen joining us for Salesian Snippets this evening. Good evening, Alex. If you want to go ahead and briefly tell us where you're Zooming in from and a little bit about who you are. Good evening, sister, and good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Alex Del Carmen. I'm Zooming in from Fort Worth, uh, Texas, actually Arlington in between Dallas and Fort Worth, and uh, I am originally from Nicaragua, came to the United States when I was 12, and uh, I am a Salesian cooperator. I think that's the greatest title that I have other than being a dad and a husband. Wonderful. We are super excited to have you joining us tonight, and we're gonna get to know you a little bit more throughout the evening. So we are only, so May, June, July, three short months away from our big 150th anniversary. So that's why every fifth of the month, we've been gathering for our Salesian Snippets show. And as we get started, we always entrust this time to St. Mary Mozzarella, our first sister who professed vows August 5th, 1872. So I'll go ahead and share my screen so everybody can join me with our opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Father, source of all that is good, you give us in St. Maria Dominica Mozzarella, a shining example of Christian and religious life. Through her deep humility and ardent charity, grant that we, in simplicity of spirit, may bear daily witness to your fatherly love. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. St. Mary Mozzarella, pray for, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And we also always start off with a trivia question. This one is probably one of the hardest ones we've had the whole year. There might be a few people who know the answer, but um, I'm not too positive of this. So August 5th is our big feast day, as when we started as the Daughters of Mary, Hope of Christians. But it's also a title of Mary. We celebrate a title of Mary on August 5th. And we'd like to see if anyone out there knows which title of Mary we honor on August 5th. If you happen to know it, you can put it in the comment section on Facebook. And if not, we will share the answer at the end. So to get started and to get to know Alex a little bit more, uh, we have our from the mundane to the mystical. So we'll start off with our very mundane question. So Alex, if you were to have your own late night talk show host, who would you invite as your first guest? Well, clearly my invitation, if, if I had, you know, since I'm an academic sister, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to split that up by saying if it would be a historical figure, it would definitely be Don Bosco. If it would be a current person, it would definitely be Pope Francis. If I, mm. would, if I would be able to put him, um, you know, uh, to say yes, right? But, but more realistically, uh, it would probably be uh, someone from the Salesian order uh, in Rome that I could ask uh, a few questions to. And so have you met Pope Francis yet? I have met him from afar uh, okay. on, on, a, on a Wednesday event uh, in Rome and, uh, and I received this blessing, which I was very, mm. very fortunate. Beautiful. If you get him as your first guest, we will all be there in your audience. So do let us know. I promise then, you'll be on the front row, sister. <laughs> beautiful. Thank you so much. And then our more mystical or spiritual question, since this is the month of May, and we'll be talking about our Blessed Mother this evening, is there a particular devotion you have to our Blessed Mother under a certain title? Well, you know, sister, I've, I've been fortunate in that I've traveled to Fatima, to Lourdes, I've been to Medjugorje, um, and, uh, and in Nicaragua, where I'm from, there was a small village called Cuapa which is where we believe our Blessed Mother appeared. So I can, and I've been to also to Mexico City, to Our Lady Guadalupe. I think my favorite title is Mary Help of Christians, um, just simply because I see that title as being both representative of our Blessed Mother as being a mom and also being a protector and a defender of us all. Mm -hmm. And so for me, uh, our Blessed Mother has the tender care of mama uh, in that title. And she also has the, the defensive, uh, you know, protective mode of mother, um, mm. where she is a mother to all of us. So mm. for me, I know it's, you would expect that from a Salesian cooperator, but it really is the, the Salesian, uh, you know, our blessed mother, Mary help of Christians, where she both dresses uh, to defend us as well as to, uh, to mm. love us. 
Beautiful. Thank you. And I mean, even how that devotion starts and how she did defend Italy and Europe from the invasion and the Pope asked everyone to pray under her intercession and therefore the title, the help of the Christians. Um, and I, the, my probably favorite Marian prayer is the one St. John Bosco wrote, mm -hmm. Oh Mary, most powerful virgin. So as you said, that, that motherly tenderness, but also that she's strong and powerful and does protect us. Beautiful. Thank you so much. So I, I have been getting to know Alex and has a fascinating story of how you know our Salesian family. And so please do share with our listeners because it's it's been really great to hear your story and then and and how um the Blessed Mother also has kind of played a part in in your experience with the Salesian family. Yeah, so thank you, sister, and thanks for having me today. It's a, it's a great pleasure to be here with you and your audience. Um, as I said before, I was born in Nicaragua in a small little town of Hinotepe, which is about 40 kilometers. We measure things in kilometers in, in Central America. So it's about 40 kilometers away from the capital, Managua. And uh, when I was around the uh, third grade age, uh, my father, who is a, an architect now retired, he, um, he asked me to go uh, to one of his projects. And I used to oftentimes go with him to the various things that he was doing. It always interested me to know how he, you know, was developing his work and whatnot. We ended up in a Salesian school uh, in my local town. And so I saw the statue uh, of San John Bosco, um, who at the time I did not know who he was, but he looked so gentle and so caring and, and uh, holding um, someone with his uh, on his left hand and little did I know that that was Dominic Savio right so but nevertheless at the time he was just a young boy next to this older man um, who looked quite gentle and quite nice and kind and so I really really liked what I felt um, at that school and uh, I told my dad that I wanted to go to school there and this was in the summertime when the, we were in transition between second and third grade and this particular school was really for uh, folks that were, um, you know, of, of lesser uh, socioeconomic status, uh, folks that were, in some cases, indigents. And my father in Latin America, where we have very structured and very marked uh, social, you know, uh, levels of income and whatnot, he said, Alex, I really think we, you know, we have this one school picked for you and this and the other. But I apparently, and I still remember somewhat, which was sort of unusual for me, I, I sat down on the floor and I refused to get up. It was almost like a sit-in from the 1960s. <laughs> <laughs> Little did I know. And so I told my dad, I said, I'm com coming to school here. And so the sister, um, who was incredibly kind and, and gentle and nice, um, she said to my father, she whispered in my father's ear and said, well, maybe young Alex wants to stay here and we should give that a try. And so my father, at the at the at the indirect pressure of the of the sister and the very direct pressure of her of his son, uh, decided that he was going to say, "Go ahead and 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 let's give it a shot." And so I stay there, third and fourth grade, and I got a chance to get to know who Don Bosco was and and get to find out what the Salesian order was about. And I just fell in love with him and his dogma, the humility component, the fact that he was an educator. And, you know, because God doesn't make any accidents and doesn't, doesn't allow for things to happen by coincidence, right? Um, I later found out um, about a year or two later that uh, my family had a very strong connection to the Salesian order. Uh, in fact, I, I learned that my mother's uh, great-grandfather, in other words, my great-great-grandfather, Narciso Sequeira was his name, um, that he um, basically lost his wife. Um, he was a, an individual that lived in Granada, Nicaragua, uh, back in the 1800s, uh, late 1800s, and, uh, and he was quite the gambler, and uh, he apparently liked uh, to drink and all the other vices, and uh, one day his friends described uh, that he had this very abrupt conversion. Um, he basically changed his ways. His aunt, um, at the time, uh, by the last name of Arellano, she took him to Turin, and uh, he met this gentleman by the name of, of St. John Bosco now that we know, and Don Rua, and uh, he continued to engage in exchanges of letters with Don Rua, and, um, and Narciso one day decided to give everything up, 
gave all his uh, goods and services to the community, to the poor community, uh, gave some of the money to his daughters to be educated in Italy. And, uh, and he left for Barcelona, Spain, where him and Don Rua prayed the novena to marry help. And on the third day of the novena, Don Rua basically said, Narciso, uh, our blessed mother wants you to be a co-adjuster for the Salesian order. So he made his promises uh, or his uh, uh, commitment to the Salesian order, his vows in Barcelona. And he ended up working in a Salesian house in Seville, Spain uh, for 30 years. Uh, he died in that home and uh, they describe uh, his death as being very peaceful. Uh, they asked him a few minutes before he died, what will you do when you get to heaven? And his response was, I will say hello to Don Bosco on behalf of my fellow Nicaraguans. And so he was responsible for having brought the Salesian order uh, to Central America. He is considered the first Salesian of Central America. And his case is now being reviewed in Rome for a possible uh, canonization. Little did I know that I had that very strong connection. I got a chance to meet his daughter, who is my great grandmother who died in her 90s. And she gave me a, a very small relic of St. John Bosco. And uh, again, I didn't know any of that as connected to my own destiny, uh, where you know many years later, I find myself now as a Salesian cooperator uh, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Mm. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. And I told Alex earlier, I spent almost two years in El Salvador. I never made it to Nicaragua, but that being the first Salesian house in Central America, all of the different houses I did visit in El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala, Costa Rica are there because of his great, great grandfather. <laughs> so it's like, wow, that's amazing. I, I met the descendant of the Salesian who brought the Salesians to Central America. So it's I uh, just is mind blowing. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, you obviously have quite the devotion to our Blessed Mother and Mary Help of Christians. And so I thought it would be neat to focus on the time at very close to the end of St. John Bosco's life. It's just three years before he dies, 1885. And he goes to visit our sisters in Nizza. So we started in Mornese. And then we have to, a few years later, move to Nizza, another small village, well, much bigger than Mornese, but another town not too far from Turin uh, for a few different reasons. So anyway, Don Bosco goes there because the sisters are on retreat. And so he's going to receive the um, vows of several of the sisters. And before he leaves, so the superiors ask him, you know, Don Bosco, can you please share some words with us? Um, and so this is just, it's a beautiful episode. And it's really what we've been using this episode from his life as the theme for our 150th anniversary of how Mary walks in this house. And so just to kind of tell part of it, um, he's greeting the sisters and saying how our, you know, our lady loves you so very much and she's here among you. And because he was kind of old and frail at this point in his life, the priest who's accompanying him is saying like, yes, you know, Don Bosco wants you to know she's watching over you and protecting you. And Don Bosco's like, no, 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 no. I mean, she's really here in this house and she's very pleased with you and wants you to continue working in the same spirit you have. And so the priest again is like, yes, Don Bosco wants you to know Mary's very pleased with you if you keep doing what you're doing. And Don Bosco again interrupts like, no, no, you don't get it. Like, I want to say she's really here. She's walking in this house and covering it with her mantle. And just this beautiful, I mean, Don Bosco, he's not, he's not like he's an old man. He's like in his late sixties. He died early seventies. Um, but he's reached such a stage of, of wisdom and deep spirituality. He actually sees the blessed mother walking in the house with the sisters there and protecting them and covering her with their mantle. It is such a comforting image. And so as you shared before about Mary, and I don't know if you, have you heard that episode before from Don Bosco's life? Have. have you been to Nizza when you went to Turin? Were you able to go there? No, I wasn't able to go to Nizza, but I obviously spent a few days uh, in Turin, mesmerized at the image of our Blessed Mother and uh, prayed many, many times before Don Bosco as well. Have you ever felt that very tangible presence of our Blessed Mother walking with you? Absolutely. And, and, you know, sister, what I, when I read this passage the first time, um, I reminded myself that, uh, you know, we, we Catholics, just in general, I don't think we Salesians are an exception to that, but I think we Catholics, sometimes we have a tendency of sort of 
you know, putting the, the love of God and the love of our Blessed Mother sort of in a box. You know, we think of it as, oh, yeah, you know, I'll pray to Mary. I've got a statue of Mary. I've got a little card of Mary and I'll pray to her my devotional and that's it. But, but I think what this does for me, at least, is it, it really allows me to understand that what Don Bosco is trying to tell us all is that, that Mary has a live, uh, keen interest in us and in our salvation. And, and, and that interest is active. Like, you know, if you look at a noun, right, it's not the, no, it's not the subject, uh, or rather, if you look at a sentence, it's not the noun or the adjective, it's the verb, right? So, so in other words, it's, she has a very active interest in the way we are viewed, in the way we are loved, in the way we are saved. And so, so for me, our Blessed Mother is there constantly. And, and it's, 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 you know, she's guiding me every day, every minute of the day. I've been blessed with having the gift. It doesn't happen all the time. It happens rarely that, that I have dreams, right? And, and I sometimes mm -hmm. dream of, you know, our Blessed Mother and see her face. Mm -hmm. And I've had a couple of dreams with Don Bosco. And one of the things that I've always that I always see is that there's a transition of those dreams to our everyday life. But, but to me, that's what Don Bosco was trying to say. It's, she's not a figure of speech. She's not a prayer card. She's not, she's not someone that you're looking at from a distance. Our Blessed Mother is an active player, an active advocate for your soul. Um, and she is constantly there in your every thought, in your every heartbeat whether you're conscious of it or not. And when he was saying to them, no, 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 she's here. I think as Don Bosco aged, he became far more simple, even though he was a simple man in many ways, far more honest and far more, uh, in many ways, he materialized the faith in a way that was more direct. And so what I see in Don Bosco here is saying to them, it's not a figure of speech. It's not a prayer card. She is actually here. Mm. Beautiful, an active presence. Um, what advice do you give? Because, you know, not everyone feels that human presence of our Blessed Mother. And for a lot of people, it is that she's a statue. Um, she is that prayer card. And so for somebody who struggles to kind of have that connection with our Blessed Mother, uh, what advice would you give them of how to deepen that relationship? Yeah, to, to me, the relationship has to develop with with really your permission, right? Because because God God gives us God gives us a lot of freedom, and He's incredibly respectful of that freedom, right? And so for me at least, that relationship has to start with you giving God, and in this case, our Blessed Mother, a yes. And what I mean by that is getting to know them, right? So so not necessarily just you know reading the scriptures once a week, going to mass, praying the rosary like you're reciting a prayer of repetition as opposed to a love letter to your mom. So, so think of it in the, in the context that just, just, just give yourself a chance to allow your brain and your mind to say, I've got a mom in heaven and she has an interest in my salvation and my welfare. How should I greet her every morning? And so, so if you have a, a, an earthly mom that's still alive and she lived with you, how would you greet her? How would you greet someone that has the care, love, and affection of a perfect mom? Because that's what she is. She's a perfect mom. And so, so you have to start that relationship, I think. And it has to be a personal choice, right? So you can't just follow tradition, and touch the statue, and bless yourself. Or Those things are great. Believe me, I have plenty of statues at home. And, and I also pray the rosary every day. And that's an amazing prayer. And there are times when I'm not... In, in a state of ecstasy, you know, praying the, the rosary, because it is repetitious. Sometimes we're busy and our brain competes with what we do. And as St. Teresa of Avila used to say, you know, she's the crazy one in the house, right? So the brain, is a, the, the mind, which is, she gets us, you know, far away sometimes from God. But give yourself a chance to have that moment where you say, every day you ask yourself this question, what have I done to improve my relationship with Mary? And, and, and if you can either read a book about her, uh, read uh, parts of the Bible about her, uh, say a prayer with your heart more so than your lips, you will begin to see how our Blessed Mother begins to carve that sort of 
you know, um, in many ways that, that, that distance that we all have with her initially, and you begin to feel her closeness and her presence in your life every day. Beautiful. Thank you. And I, uh, again, that she's real, she's a person. And, you know, when you're sharing that and just thinking we're still in the Easter season, you know, Easter lasts 50 days and she and Jesus you know, are the only two people already experiencing the fullness of the resurrection. Like she is body and soul with Jesus in heaven. And so that very uh, active, as you said, that presence, um, she's real. And yes, that relationship is a real relationship. As you said, like with your earthly mother, the same way you can talk to and spend time with our blessed mother. Beautiful. Thank you. And I mean, we as Salesian St. John Bosco, you know, had such a great devotion to our blessed mother. Um, and so I, we tried to encourage the kids every day, you know, he would always tell his boys to finish the day with three Hail Marys. And I tell them, you know, I, I try and say three Hail Marys as I'm falling asleep. And I don't think I finished the first one. I'm asleep. <laughs> uh, but it's a beautiful tradition, you know, to fall asleep with our blessed mother. Um, and as Don Bosco said, you know, like she has done everything. And obviously she does everything with her son. You know, we also have to make sure we're not just saying that it's Mary, but um, she wants to help us back to the help of Christian. She wants to help us. So thank you so much. This has been a beautiful conversation. And I think we could keep talking about it for another 30, 40 minutes, um, but we'll wrap it up for this evening um, by going back to our trivia question to see if anybody knows the answer, the title of Mary that we remember on August 5th. So I don't know if you know it, Alex. I think it's the Our Lady of the Snows. Right? Woohoo! Good job. <laughs> yes, Our Lady of the Snows. So August 5th is our big feast day because it's when our foundation, the Institute started, St. John Bosco, St. Mary Mozzarella, August 5th, 1872. But it is the great feast of Our Lady of the Snows. So the, the story goes back to the fourth century um, where, you know, this, this couple were unable to have a child and they pray and have a dream and uh, blessed mother appears and says, you know, go to this spot in Rome. And, uh, that's where I want you to build a church in my honor. Cause they were a wealthy couple. They had money. So build a church there in my, my honor. You'll know the spot cause it will be snowing. And so that night of August 4th into August 5th, which if you've been in Italy in August, it is not snowy <laughs> weather. It's pretty hot and humid. And wouldn't you know it snows. And the same night, the Pope Liberius has this dream that he also has this vision. Say, it's like you have you had your dreams and have seen Don Bosco and Blessed Mother. It's the same thing. He's told, go to this spot in Rome and build a church there in my honor where it's where it's going to be snowing. So they show up there, and sure enough, what one spot in Rome, it's snowing. And that is where to this day the Basilica of Mary Major stands. So it was built first in the 300s and obviously been rebuilt over the years and made bigger. But Mary Major, the first basilica built in honor of our Blessed Mother, and it was because of her appearance in a dream on August 5th. So Our Lady of the Snows, well done, you passed. Thank you. <laughs> and we wanna invite everyone, obviously for our next two episodes of Salesian Snippets, but on August 6th will be our big celebration of our 150th anniversary. So if you live in or near San Antonio, we will be having our big celebration there August 6th. We'll start with mass at 10 a.m. And then we'll have live entertainment, music, dances, food trucks, games for the kids. It's going to be a beautiful day, August 6th in San Antonio at St. John Bosco School. Everyone's invited to join the celebration. But before then, next month on June 5th, our next episode of Salesian Snippets, we are going to have the Papal Ninja Warrior with us, Sean Bryan. Um, if anybody is a fan of American Ninja Warrior, he is the Papal Ninja Warrior, and he's been on several seasons. Uh, some of the sisters just got, got to go see him compete, actually, in San Antonio and Los Angeles. And we can't say anything about it because it hasn't been aired yet. Uh, but it was pretty exciting that they got to see him in person and compete. So June 5th, uh, Sean Bryan, the Papal Ninja Warrior. And we'll be talking about the virtue of courage. So that is all for tonight. Alex, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, sir. And hopefully we'll see you August 6th in San Antonio. I will be there. Wonderful. Mary, help of Christians. Pray for us. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everyone have a wonderful evening. God bless.